uh, Alan and um, uh, Hari to um, to join us again. Um, here they come. I think. Here's Alan. Here's Harry. Oh, yeah. Back. Welcome back. Hello. And, uh, um, great to see you. And uh, uh, yeah, we've it's been a bit of a fantastic three um, set of of questions, uh, and um, I, I think a really great connection between um, you know Alan's overview, uh, Harry giving us some really specific details, and Ollie's um, case study of the experience that they they've got. Um, building up. I was wondering perhaps um, maybe I'd invite Alan and, and Ollie to talk to this definition of ecosystem, which uh, was shown, I think, very clearly in Ollie's perspective. Um, may, Alan, what, what were your thoughts? You, you, you said. I, I'm <laughs> sorry, I missed Ollie's, uh, the beginning part of Ollie's presentation, so I don't know what he said. Uh, oh. So, he, um, so you, you talked in your session about um, you need to know, your business needs to know its ecosystem. And Ollie was able to, but perhaps you could um, uh, replay back uh, the, the the three different ecosystems that you shared with us. Yeah, so, so, really yeah exactly. So, that Alan, you'd be very interested in. Sure. So I think my main message was, of course, that we play in a world ecosystem of ecosystems, right? So, so I, I don't know if you heard any of my story, but I heard the second half, but I was uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so the industry I was talking about is basically the, in a way, smart buildings. So the, the way we define is that we as a Kone, our corporation, we have our small, e small ecosystem, which we call people flow ecosystem. This is about everything related to helping people move around in and between buildings efficiently. And then of course, in the smart building ecosystem, then we have an ecosystem about energy management, management. We have an ecosystem about heat and ventilation. We have an ecosystem about safety. But of course, in order to create most value, we want to combine these together in a way. If I can feed feed more value to those other ecosystems, that adds. And on top of all of this, of course, we have the smart city ecosystem. So in a way, there's a lot of layers. And I think that's yeah. the beauty of API economy, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, yeah, so I agree. I, uh, so, I mean, I, I actually wrote something about smart cities, but it seems like a decade ago now. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, I, I mean, when you think about a city situation and it's it's all the things you just spoke about but then there's entirely other things set of things right like mm -hmm. um employment or education or you know the other things that that people are, are doing in in cities and, and so as a government in in a city that wants to implement that kind of thing they they would have an ecosystem of ecosystems right so so that you can come to the smart mm -hmm. city and then navigate your way to the part of the things that you care about and i i think that's um, government and smart cities is probably the, the uber example of of, uh, of that kind of a scenario. But government in general is is that way. When you think about all the different aspects of government that um, that have to exist, and, and they, we call them all government, but they're entirely different from one another, right? So, uh, so, so you know, I, I actually just recently wrote something about COVID nineteen and, and government, and again, it hits on so many different areas, right? So, government is is this hodgepodge kind of a thing and, and then each one of them is its own little ecosystem so yep yeah, yeah absolutely agree mm -hmm. yeah. yeah and i think uh, yeah when you overlay that's that a challenge with my there you go okay yes yeah, so you overlay the smart cities with geographies um uh in all parts of the world and i guess um too there's so many questions about cities going on in people's minds at the moment um this responsibility more broadly of people's you know, thinking about people and they're connected into their life seems to be very, very real for the situation that we find ourselves in globally. Um, right. you, is this playing into the conversations, Ollie, that you're having? A lot of people are talking about the city country perspectives and um, what what living, working at home is about and those sorts of things. Yeah, no surprise this spring has been, this half a year has been quite a driver for that change as well. But yeah, I mean, we, we of course talk, talk about the urbanization. So the amount of people living in cities is growing. It's growing so fast. And of course, that's why there's more vertical, vertical buildings, more market for us. <laughs> it's of course a positive for the company. But yeah, exactly what's happening next. I think that's, that's the most interesting thing. I mean, we are, we are dealing with offices. Offices are changing now. Mm. I'm now in an office that's half empty. And uh, the companies are starting to decentralize their offices. That's been happening. And on the other hand, people work from home. They have new requirements for their own residential sites. Mm -hmm. 
again, in a way, changing all the segmentation we had. So in a way, that's a very interesting, of course, very difficult year, but uh, it's very interesting to see how the, how the changes are happening so fast and how buildings are used. And also in Finland, we see these multi-use buildings, which are quite new phenomenon, especially here. More, more common maybe abroad, but here exactly combining offices, residential building, retail, all in one place. And that's also changing quite a bit how people are using the buildings. And of course, open again possibilities for those yeah. parts. Maybe I say. I think you um you spoke um a lot about the, the 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 different types of new ways that you think of customers. I mean, Harry, and you you gave us your uh, insights are all around um, understanding different ways of categorizing and classifying customers. Um, what were some of your thoughts about the uh, the strategy um, that uh, that Ollie and the team are following? Actually, what makes me wonder uh, is that having a global footprint, as you do, uh, have you seen uh, what we have seen in small scale in the Nordics and in the Benelux countries, that the um, stage of digital economy, the stage of di digital um, society actually uh, is controlling the, the adoption rate uh, extremely directly. I mean, as, as a concrete example, uh, one of our PSA, Professional Services Automation Services, uh, we've been live in the Netherlands for a few years now. Now we try to open Poland, but what we heard, what we felt is that the way of working is so much less digital than uh, that providing digital tools just doesn't make any sense in the market that we have actually pulled out. From, from that experiment. So how do you see that uh, from a global perspective? I mean, absolutely. It's, uh, we operate in over 60 countries. The, the differences are vast. I mean, I, I think in some countries you still do work orders for maintenance on piece of, piece of paper. <laughs> and in some other countries that there are actually legislation for digitalization there. And then exactly the clock speed in, for example, China versus Europe is quite different. I think we, we recently published a story about Singapore as a great example. I mean, the companies there, the people, they are so digitally native by now and everyone is so ahead. So it, it's quite a different market from some of the other countries. So yes, actually, it's again very interesting, but of course challenging for a company trying to do global offering. And, and also, I'd say, I mean, Alan, you mentioned the, uh, uh, the growth driven by the governmental approach. And, and also the differences in there. Uh, I've been wondering if the, if the Nordic governments are actually uh, trying to catch the right game in some of the initiatives now, because they have been uh, starting all sorts of initiatives where they would be building the actual services rather than providing enabling APIs. I don't know if you've seen that in, in other countries. Um, I, I think it's always a combination, right? So, so you, you know, you, 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 I think the best way that I see that people go about this is you think about things from the customer's perspective, right? And what is the customer trying to accomplish? And, and, and in, in some cases, the, what the customer is trying to accomplish is exactly what you're already providing. I just need to give you access to it. And, and, and that's wonderful. And in other cases, I need to put together an ecosystem, a marketplace, a, a solution that includes things that I do and things that others do. And, and it, 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 it's, I think, sometimes a narrow view when companies start to think about, well, a customer needs this, I need to do it all. Right. And, and, and so, so, you know, I'm a, I'm a bank and all of a sudden I'm selling cards, right. You know, that, that's just not going to happen. Right. So, so I need to think about the customer who's buying a car or buying a house or, or, or doing these things. And even, you know, not forget just banks, but so many things are involved in buying a car or buying a house. The government is involved there. Uh, insurance is involved there. There's so many different industries involved and you're just not going to provide the whole solution. Right. So, so you may need to build some new things inside your part of the solution, and you may have some things. But, but thinking about it from the customer's perspective and how do I enable a customer to be successful with what they're trying to accomplish, I, I wish some of this had existed when I moved my house down here to Florida. I mean, you know, because because uh, you know I had to put the solution together myself. I mean, and it's, it's challenging to know all the different organizations you need to talk to and all the different uh, things that you need to get set up. And if somebody had done that work for me, I would have been thrilled to use their solution, right? Uh, and, and that's, that's I think, what the goal of, of any 
whether it's private or public, uh, you know, uh, situation should be that I think of a scenario that customers, my citizens are doing and, and, and how do I make that easy for them to do it? And, and especially when you add in today's COVID-19 situation, how do I make them do it in a way that they don't have to come into an office building and, and, and interact? Uh, so, so, you know, I think to your earlier question on digitization, um, I think some of these countries or locations that that are still doing things on paper and handing things to people and all that um, have the opportunity to to leap ahead. Uh, it, it's a it's a matter of desire. And and one of the articles I wrote for API Scene was about a commitment to change. It was about how do you change the culture in a company, and, and it's all about how committed you are to doing it. Uh, you know, if you are not. Going, if you're just going to try a little bit, but without making a real commitment to it, it's going to be a long time and, and difficult. Versus the company that's going to jump in and say, "We're going to modernize. We're, you know, we're, wherever we are, that's doing things by paper today. I'm going to just leap ahead to, uh, to, to, you know, to do something that others can't do." And um, you know, you may or may not be successful. Oftentimes, the first one out there is is not the most successful, right? But um, but it, it's a, it's an attempt to to try to move things forward. So I, I think that's the way to go. Yeah, fully agree. Um, the, yeah. There's also another interesting dynamic in um, the public APIs. So let's say the public involvement in APIs, um, which is through regulation. I mean, PSD two is one of the uh, core examples there. And uh, I've all, already seen some sort of uh, let's say fight back reaction from some of the banks trying to force a, a similar uh, forced opening, if you like, of, of certain markets and cert certain data there. Have you encountered that in the, uh, for instance, in the building ecosystem or smart city ecosystem, because that's highly regulated as well? Yes, so of course, there are standards and uh, standards are evolving. So there's a there's, there's some movement, of course, certain data needs to be there. And like I mentioned, there's actually some countries have specific legislation, for example, about reporting what's happening. Because, of course, elevators, for example, move people around. So they are they are safety critical devices. So, of course, there is national things and then there's global global standards. And let's see where that goes. But I think especially in a higher, higher level in the smart building and the smart city level, that's going to be very crucial in how the ecosystem evolves, right? I think Alan probably knows more about those on that higher level, but that's definitely going to, in a way, shape how the, how that ecosystem can evolve in the coming years. And then you don't know, ask the question you know, for the citizen or the individual themselves. Yeah. Um, the security of their data, the security, you know, the degree to which they, um, you know, uh, choose to opt, be, be able to opt in or out of um, the use of, uh, you know, this type of information about them is, I think. Um, also still something in a way as, as, a, as a society, I think we might be uh, arguably still questioning. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And that needs to yeah, be- I mean, Europe certainly has taken the lead between PSD2 and the banking industry and GDPR in general. Um, you know, it, 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 there are things happening in Europe that the rest of the world is looking at and going, okay, is it coming my way? Uh, you know, and, and in some cases, it, it, banking is an interesting one um, because you have PSD2 and open banking happening a lot in Europe. And it's happening now in other parts of the world, sometimes through regulation, but sometimes through market forces. And 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 and, and I'm starting to see um, this go into other industries. So other industries are coming to me and having discussions about open insurance or open, you know, whatever else. And 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 it's not because there's a regulation that's pushing them to do it anymore. It's because they're seeing what's happening in banking and saying. You know, there may be some advantage to this from a business perspective, and 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 so I, I think um, regulation is, is certainly a, a big hammer that makes people move. Um, but but um, I, I think that in many cases, market forces are going to drive this more than regulation, as we see industries standardize on API um, interactions. And, and you know, obviously, there'll always be need for. Um, innovation and, and, and things beyond what's the standard and and, and there's challenges there but um, but I, I think the driving of apis across industries is going to be uh, something that we see you can, you can also see um, different jurisdictions 
um, and governments looking over the shoulders of others. Um, you know, yeah, I, I mean, you know, so, some of these industries, uh, many of these industries are crossing governments, right? So mm -hmm. so you can't say in one government that, that you need to do it this way and another government to do it another way. These industries have to get ahead of that, right? If I want to call you on the telephone, I, it needs to work. Uh, you know, the fact that we're in, in different geographies, um, you know, that, that can't play a, a, into it and, and similar to things like healthcare, right? If we need to get healthcare when we're traveling or, you know, travel, I mean, all these things need, you know, it's not just one country that owns, owns that. And so the industries need to kind of take charge and, and get ahead of some of these things that might be inconsistent. And, and a prime example of health and safety uh, on the topic uh, of COVID-19. I, I mean, uh, in Finland, uh, a contact tracing application was released yesterday and in the first day, uh, it was downloaded by more than 20% of the adult population. So in a country of five and a half million people, more than a million downloads took place in the first day. So this clearly, I mean, you need the um, infrastructure, the elements provided by Apple, by Google. You need the governmental uh, uh, effort to create the actual uh, actual application. And then you need... Uh, a society which is not only accepting but eager to adopt the digital way of life in this case for health and safety. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the, the contact tracing is a very exciting and interesting and controversial uh, topic, right? And, and and you play into the privacy situation there, and and, and um, it, it's a conversation that can go on way longer than this uh, <laughs> situation. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's very complicated. Uh, but I, I think that if we don't have some kind of a uh, technology answer to contact tracing, the idea of human interviews is is just not going to be sufficient, right? So, um, yeah. so you know, with the right opt-in and privacy protection and, and, and all that kind of thing, I think you can make it work. But it all has to be thought out. Uh, so, yeah. Um, we got some from uh, uh, on the chat. Uh, uh, making observations from this from Yoko uh, Molinen. Um She's a doctor of developer experience, she describes herself, um, and do, do, making comments, for example, on the uh, PSD2 versus open API um, type specs. So uh, that in the in the perspective, I don't know if the three of you have, have views on, um, you know, standards, good, bad, you know, um, uh, how you see these evolving um, and, uh, you know, roles for people that, for organizations, for example, um, uh, you know, businesses, what's their role in contributing and or responding and, and so on? Um, are you yourselves actively involved or? Well, I've been, you know, I have background in banking, I have background in telco, and now working in the, uh, uh, in a regulated market that I actually so, sold or was a co-founder of a, a startup for e-signatures, which is highly regulated in Europe. So, uh, yes, we've been doing a lot, uh, a lot of things which have been all, or not only enabled by regulation, so they have created new markets, but also seeing the faults that have uh, uh, have res have resulted from not quite perfect regulation, if you like. And uh, PSD2 is a prime example of something that could have changed the market in a sharp, really dynamic uh, sense. But it's some parts of it are a bit toothless, if you like. And the closer to implementation that uh, that, you, that you come, the more you see the faults that actually slow down the dynamic rather than having a real open, uh, multi-party driven uh, type of opening of the market. And uh, I think quite a few, uh, for instance, EIDIS, uh, which is for e-signatures e or, or electronic trust, if you like, uh, has uh, similar problems or let's say challenges rather. Uh, and uh, that's why they are they are updating the regulation. So um, not even the best intents uh, easily turn into good regulation. I think we've seen that quite a few times. Then again, I wouldn't want them to stop because, as, as Alan, you said, uh, Europe has been driving some of the change and uh, it has sort of caught on other players who uh, do it on, uh, let's say, as willing partners <laughs> rather than being forced by regulation there. Uh, and uh, that could be something that Europe could lead for a long time from this point on. Mm. Is that true? 
Very interesting. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm curious whether you've got uh, questions for each other from... Uh, uh, Unfortunately, I missed most of the other sessions. I was off in a, oh, yeah. in a round, table, round table, so I didn't. Uh, You've been flying yeah. between yeah. tabs. Yeah. yeah. The funny, I, I, Ali, I, I did catch the end of yours with the uh, elevator situation. And I have to ask you if you've ever seen the, the funny video with the Scottish guys on the voice activated elevator. <laughs> it's, uh, it, if you haven't seen that, uh, go, go Google that. It's, it's hysterical. Yeah, I have seen that. <laughs> and that's a great use case for APIs, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> Slightly lacking in implementation and user experience. Yeah. Hilarious, yes. Yeah. <laughs> It's one of those videos we surprisingly circulate quite often in this company. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> With, I mean, I would have a question for you, Ollie. With so much going on, and you said, you know, this uh, huge acceleration that you're under, um, how do you go through prioritizing what's the most important thing to be working on next when presumably you've got, you know, so much changing in your environment and so much that you're both leading and responding to? That is actually one of my daily dilemmas. So as we, as Harry was also pointing out, we are working in so many markets as well that we have to really figure out where to go. So it's it's really about working together with the customers. I mean, actually, that's why we opened the APIs to begin with, because uh, the customers were basically starting to see the need, and they told us that they would need this and this kind of data. So that's where we start, and I think that's again in a way how you should build an ecosystem. Of course, is together. Mm. So, I mean, sure, we can define all kinds of APIs, but if no one wants to use them, what's the point? So, it's about prioritization, of course. We have corporate corporate level targets, and then we work with the customers to try to figure out what makes sense uh, for them. But I think that, uh, in a way, that's also interesting, links to the PSD2 discussion in some ways, that first, the reg regulation enables a market, but where do you go from there? What, what are the limitations? Who do you work with to define the direction? It's not always possible, of course, if the regulation is limiting, but uh, you know, in a way it could open up that door to that collaboration so we can stay ahead of the ahead with the industry, like Alan said earlier. Yeah, choosing yeah. choosing where you spend the most time for the most, you know, given there are so many places. Exactly. Where do you make the impact? Most. Um, very challenging. Yeah. And you know, yeah, and 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 how much of it comes down to even the kind of mindset that people would actually take to contributing to the conversation? Because I would imagine that coming from an engineering company that's you know with a hundred year history, but that has yes. seen huge changes in its in you know in, in you know uh, transporting people. Um, yeah. But you know, I would imagine still very very um, very strong in in an engineering culture um, to actually rethink from this sort of more fluid, uh, collaborative, human kind of side of things would be really interesting. Absolutely. That's, of course, challenging. And it's also interesting that you need to think about who you talk to from the customer side as well and from the partner side. Mm -hmm. I mean, of course, our customers are quite often the ones who buy the elevators. But now you are starting to have these new people in the field. We have digital consultants running around. They're telling, telling uh, people what smart buildings are what they should be connecting, what are the services they should be building. So of course, we also need to tap into those people. And they will again then, uh, they're the ones in a way, at least for their part, they're defining that ecosystem further. So if we don't talk to them, what will happen next? So it, in a way, finding new people to talk to as well is super important, not just within the co company, but also outside. Okay. One of the, um, uh, it's, uh, I want to just build on what Ali just said. They, um, so I, I um, I'm doing another API Days conference in a couple of weeks. I think it's for Indonesia, and and they asked me to um, to talk on the, kind of a follow on to this topic of ecosystems, which is how do you how do you have interaction with people at the other company to yeah. to build that? And and I started to think about it. It's a new content I hadn't created for anything else before. I just built it for this upcoming event, and I started to think about. Who, who is the audience that you speak to in the other in the other company? Uh, because let's assume that your company at least is is, is doing the right thing and, and that you've got an API developer and an API product manager and all the other roles that, that are the appropriate roles to have. 
that doesn't mean the other company does. Exactly. Right? And, 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 and so, um, you know, so when you go to talk to them, if you go looking for the API product manager, you may not find one, right? You know, and and so who, who is it that you're going to talk to and how do you get yourself, how do you get them to understand what it is you're even offering them to do, right? You know, you may need to do some education. Or who's educating who? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, and in a B2B domain, exactly. You're talking to the purchasing manager. The business yeah. development manager, the customer experience manager, the, the maybe head of IT, whatever. Yeah. So many different people, yeah. Fascinating. Yeah. Um, we could talk about this for hours, um, mm -hmm. but um, we're actually at time. Um, Mayuka will be um, coming back on the screen. I do want to make a point, um, uh, do a quick plug to, to yourselves and everybody else that the, um, the spatial pl chat platform is going to be open from um, 17.45, from uh, quarter to six finish time, and that's an opportunity uh, 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 simulating the, the kind of networking experience that you normally have at a conference. And uh, um, if, if any or all of you are, are able to join that, I'm sure that people would um, uh, love to have the opportunity to perhaps uh, yeah, ask the questions that they uh, didn't feel um, that are still on their minds from that conversation today. So so thank you, uh, Ollie, Ali, and Alan and Harry. It's been absolutely uh, a delight to um, have you this afternoon. And look forward to seeing you in the spatial chat, chat shortly. All right. Take care. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Bye-bye.